<laughs> this meeting is called to order in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act. This meeting was included in a list of meeting dates sent to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Highland Park Planet on January 4th, 2017, and was posted on the bulletin board of Borough Hall, 221 South Fifth Avenue on January 4th, 2017, and has remained continuously posted as required by law. Fire exits are to my left and to my right. Please speak into the microphones when you come up to talk, and assistive listening devices are available. Mrs. Bickhart, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Brill mittler Here. Councilman Fine? Here. Councilwoman Foster Dublin? Here. Councilman George? Councilman Hirsch? Here. Councilwoman Kim? Here. Councilwoman Welkovitz? Here. Burr Attorney? Here. Burr Administrator? May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular and conference, conference meetings held May 2nd, 2017 as distributed? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did everybody respond? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Council reports. I'll start on my left with Councilwoman Foster Dublin. Well, thank you, Mayor, but my report tonight is easy. Tonight is a fun night. Last week, National Night Out was canceled because of the rain. Tonight, it's absolutely beautiful. We're in here, and they're having a wonderful time downtown. Our first aid squad, our fire department, our OEM, uh, the fire engine is out there with the ladder truck, and the kids are going crazy. There's a, a, a rock climbing event that's going on. Our police, I think our, our police chief is getting dunk as we speak. And there's a lot of activities and a lot of information about keeping everyone safe, not just our children, but keeping everyone safe. That's going on tonight. So tonight is a huge public safety night. And we wish we were there, but we're inside. And it's absolutely gorgeous. That's my report. Everyone, please do have a safe summer. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman Fine. I do not have a report tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councilwoman Kim. Thank you, Mayor. Recreation is in the last two weeks of summer camps. The theater two-week camp performed Lion King Kids last Thursday to a full house. We have a record number of campers with both basketball and tennis camp enrolling the maximum participations. We are registering for fall soccer and flag football. All other fall adult and youth programs will be open for registration beginning August 15th. We're already on to Halloween. The Halloween party and parade will be held on Sunday, October 29th from 2 to 5 p.m. Our senior center today, the seniors enjoyed afternoon entertainment with a bluegrass jam and ice cream social event. Monday, August 14th, seniors will be attending a Spanish cooking class at 11 a.m. And Tuesday, August 15th at 3 p.m., we will be hosting our annual summer, summer Hawaiian party at the Senior Youth Center. On the 16th, August 16th, the Senior Youth Center will be hosting a Chinese cultural presentation at 10 a.m. Upcomer, upcoming senior, senior summer trips, August 21st, our senior beach trip to Long Branch, and Tuesday, August 29th, <laughs> is our senior trip to Atlantic City. Please stop by the Senior Center for a listing of upcoming fall and winter program. We still have some hot days ahead of, ahead of us. Our cooling center is located at the Highland Park Senior Center and it's open summer hours. Call Borough Hall for more details. 
During the recent power outage in town that left many of our seniors without a cooling system during a heat advisory, the Senior Youth Center has put a procedure in place to have a staff member open the center in, emergen in emergency situations for our residents. As it relates to our Arts Commission, the Chalk Art Festival was rescheduled to this evening, so if you're able to get out of the meeting early, please stop by the National Night Out and see some of the wonderful art. Um, we're having a um, Band-Aid Sculpture Commission project that's underway, and we're working on Music on the Corner series. And if you still, before the summer um, is over, stop by the sculpture walk, um, we will, the disinstallment at the Environmental Center is scheduled for next month, September. The Arts Commission has moved its August meeting from August 10th to August 21st at 6 p.m. at Borough Hall. Our county culture, <coughs> The Middlesex County Fair is happening August 8th through the 13th at 655 Cranberry Road in East Brunswick. Stop by the Roosevelt Park in Edison for the plays in the park. Mary Poppins is running now through Saturday, August 12th. And this Sunday, August 13th at 1 p.m., the 13th Annual Indian Day Parade will take place on Oak Tree Road in Edison. And that is it for my report. Thank you. Councilman Hirsch. Um, I, I, I just have, I have just two things I, I have to say. You said you had no report. I know I said I had no report. <laughs> I had, just had a few dates I have to mention, though, uh, because I realize that we're not meeting until, until next month. Um, but first, I wanted to thank, thank Councilwoman Foster Dublin. Uh, we were at National Night Out before, and uh, my kids climbed the rock wall. It was an awesome, awesome event. Thank you to the police, and um, thank you, uh, Officer Lair, for, uh, for, for being here instead of out there. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're here, too, though. So, yeah. um, uh, I just wanted to um, report on two things um, because it's, cause it's, it is important. Uh, the Commission for Universal Access uh, at its last meeting in July discussed a number of, uh, discussed it, it, its regular business, but um, their meetings are actually going to change um, to um, uh, a time that we haven't yet determined. Um, the chair is, um, is unavailable on the first Thursdays of the month. and. Um, uh, 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 John Hollings, we we uh, we we discussed this. Well, I, th I think back in May we asked if it were if, if we were able to move the meetings when it, at a time that was that worked with the commission. Um, so in September, uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll know when those meetings will be for the remainder of the year. Hang um, on one second, Borough Club. Does the committee have to do anything special to change the uh, dates? When once they, you know, I guess they have their regular calendar meetings. If they've already noticed them, they have to cancel the ones that they've already noticed and we notice and the new dates. Right, okay. right. Pretty we just, yeah, and we, I think we okay. discussed that. Um, I mean, this this issue came up back in May when the chair realized that she was not going to be available, but she wasn't sure what her new availability will be. Um, the Human Relations Commission uh, met on July 19th. Its next meeting will be next Wednesday, August 16th at 7 p.m. here at Borough Hall in the lower level conference room. Um, the uh, the uh, Highland Park Food Pantry is teaming up with uh, um, Highland Park Gives a Hoot uh, on September 23rd for a car wash fundraiser at the Highland Park High School from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and the um, the food pantry is also taking very seriously. I, I hope everybody took the. This is not my my area, but I, I do encourage everybody to, everybody to take the um, Sustainable Highland Park um, uh, plastic bag survey. Um, and our boards and commissions are taking that concept the uh, the concept of a bag free Highland Park very seriously, including the food pantry, which uh, discussed it uh, at length at its last meeting and um, uh, came up as developing several ideas around going. Uh, bagless or placing a more of an emphasis on recycling. Um, the uh, just two more things. I attended a uh, citizens campaign um, civic summit last uh, Saturday uh, over at the Rutgers um, uh, 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 School for Labor, 
and um, uh, it's a great event. They're, they're, it's a, it, they're, they're a good government organization. We've done, we've partnered with them in the past um, on the Public Information Committee. Um, one of their coordinators is, uh, is an incoming volunteer um, um, with us, and uh, uh, so that was it, was, it was nice to, to be with, uh, with an organization that um, represents good, transparent government. And um, uh, just a brief update, I attended a meeting three weeks ago of Interfaith Rise, where we discussed uh, Know Your Rights resources for Highland Park's immigrant community, and uh, the newly constituted commission for uh, immigrant and refugee affairs uh, will likely hold its first meeting in September. Again, we're still trying to figure out dates for the fall, but um, uh, stay tuned for those dates. Those will be forthcoming. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, while we're doing community announcement, I forgot to add one thing. Go ahead. Um, on Saturday, August 26, from 12 to 6 p.m., we're a community that celebrates diversity. So from 12 to 6 p.m., there will be a Caribbean festival in Boyd Park in New Brunswick. Please come out and join and be a part of a very festive event. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilwoman Foster Dublin um, plays a leading role with the Caribbean organization. So thank you for your service beyond our community. Thank you. Okay, Council President Welkovitz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, in, in July, last month, uh, the Council um, formally created our new Safe Walking and Cycling Committee. Uh, the purpose of the committee uh, is to review and monitor the implementation of policies affecting travel by foot or by bicycle within the borough and neighboring communities to ensure their safety. Uh, tonight we're going to vote on a resolution to declare that September will be Highland Park's Safe Walking and Bicycling uh, Month. And to that we have a couple of events that, that we're hosting. Um, Earlier this evening, I was at National Night Out. Um, in our, I set up our booth with the Safe Walking and Cycling Committee, and we talked about a demonstration bike lane down South First Avenue. Uh, the demonstration bike lane is a temporary bike lane that um, we'll be painting with help from grad students at Rutgers, and they'll also be taking down notes and, uh, and information on uh, the issues that we notice as we put this bike lane into place. Um, uh, thank you, Ms. Bickhart, for helping in our booth as well. Uh, we, we got a lot of feedback. Um, we have a website, uh, and also we have a new Gmail account, which is hpswacc at gmail.com. Uh, the website we'll have to post on, 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 on our website. I don't have it here right now. Um, uh, some of the other things that we plan to do is a community bike ride and also a bike rodeo later this month, uh, later, later in the month of September, excuse me. So all those things are planned in September uh, to uh, celebrate the um, Safe Walking and Cycling Month. And just a couple of Save the Dates and Reminders. Uh, Wednesday night in August is Ladies' Night. So women, when you go out shopping or dining uh, in town, there are special promotions and, and discounts for you. Also, there's some more outdoor movies on Saturday, October 8th, I'm sorry, Saturday, uh, August 12th and August 26th. Uh, also, a big save the date for September, the townwide garage sale is on September 16th and 17th. And our Arts in the Park is on September 24. This year, we've had a few meetings with our, uh, with the New Brunswick Cultural Center, and we're doing a promotional partnership with them because they're they're hosting their Raritan River Festival on the same day. So please enjoy both of those amazing events on the same day. That's September 24. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Borough Administrator's not here. Borough Attorney, do you have a report? <coughs> no report, Madam Mayor. Okay. I have just a couple of things to, to talk about. Um, as I mentioned a while ago, um, I signed on with over 300 mayors across the country um, as a climate mayor. Um, and this all came about after the decision uh, by um, the administration not to participate in the Paris Accords. 
Um, there are, I believe, 341 mayors representing 66 million Americans um, in, in this effort. And um, we are committed to reducing greenhouse gases and um, working together and sharing information that we, we happen to get. Um, and also um, the possibility that larger municipalities will be able to help us fund some things going forward for our, com our own community. Um, I hope to be working closely with uh, Sustainable Highland Park on these um, uh, projects. Um, as you know, HP Gives a Hoot is a nonprofit fund uh, that was started to help feed children who um, were not getting lunches when school was not in service or not open, you know, for special holidays when parents might still be working. Um, and um, the HP Gives a Hoot committee is looking for volunteers. So please, if you would like to volunteer to help them with um, providing these meals and entertaining the children or just being there to supervise, um, they would greatly appreciate it. And if you go to um, HP Gives a Hoot Facebook page or email me, I'll be happy to put you in touch with the chairperson, Michael Buckman. Um, Councilwoman Kim mentioned the sculpt Sculpture Walk, which is running through the summer. Um, some of you, I hope, have noticed the quite intriguing, color-changing um, sculpture that- Skirt, skirt. <laughs> it's skirt, skirt. It's called skirt, skirt. But, um, it does have a skirt on it, if you look at it closely. Um, uh, it is on the corner of uh, Raritan and River uh, at our little memorial park there. And um, it is the uh, beginning of our sculpture walk, which runs uh, along River Road from the Environmental Center area down past the Native Plant Re uh, Reserve and um, into the open field. So while, you while they're still here, I hope you'll all take advantage of it and get out there and do a little walking on, um, near Johnson Park. Um, I had the honor of going to the clubhouse today, as many of our seniors call our senior center, to hear the bluegrass group that was performing there. Um, some of our regulars were up and dancing. It was a wonderful event. And um, you know, if whether or not you're a senior, I think it's really worthwhile stopping by when you hear about some of the performances that are going to be there. So I just wanted to um, talk a little about that. And again, also as uh, Councilwoman Kim mentioned, the Chalk, Chalk Art Festival, which is our very first Chalk Art Festival, um, is, is going on right now. And uh, I had the opportunity while I was at uh, National Night Out to stop by and see the beautiful ch chalk drawings. It's very hard for a woman from Brooklyn to say those two <laughs> words together. <laughs> <laughs> um, that um, young children and professional artists were creating uh, on the street um, on the south side of South Third uh, of Third Avenue in Raritan. Um, all of the proceeds um, from this event are going to help um, ASAP, the Adult Sub Sus Substance Abuse Program, which was started by um, longtime resident Judge um, Barnett Hoffman. Um, he was a superior, superior court judge who retired recently, and while he sat on the bench and saw the number of people coming before him for repeat offenses, he wanted to do something that would help reduce the number of repeat offenders, um, and started this program, which has been extremely success, excuse me, extremely successful um, in. Um, creating um, an atmosphere while in prison where um, inmates could learn skills, learn um, more about life management, and it has greatly reduced the number of repeat offenders in this area. So I, I urge you, uh, if you're watching this, you missed it, <laughs> but um, if you um, want after this to go out and check out National Night Out and the Chalk Art Festival. Thank you. 
Any public discussion? Just state the website address. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. We did establish a website. Um, is, should people have any uh, comments or concerns? And we <coughs> welcome a lot of feedback on the demonstration bike lane. And that website is https colon slash slash hpswacc.com. Thank you. All right. Seeing no discussion. Clerk, would you report on advertising the Safe Walking and Cycling Committee Ordinance Amendment for consideration of passage on final reading by title? Excuse me, Councilman Fine. I just wanted, was wondering, Madam Mayor, if you wanted to just address the recent tax bill that everyone received. Ah, uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Councilman Fine. Yes, the 4,000 tax letters were sent out to all of our um, homeowners. Um, and um, I'm delighted to report that for the first time in a long time, there it was actually a $60 reduction on the average home tax. So thank you for that reminder, Councilman Fine. Sure. <laughs> OK. Um, let me go on. Um, clerk, would you report on advertising the Safe Walking and Cycling Committee Ordinance Amendment for consideration of passage on final reading by title? An ordinance amending the revised general ordinances of the Borough of Highland Park, Chapter 2-43, Safe Walking and Cycling Committee was duly advertised for consideration of passage on final reading by title and affidavits of publication are on file. The ordinance was posted and made available for public inspection as required by law. All right, may I have a motion to take up the ordinance on final reading by title? So moved. Second. Okay. Any public hearing on this? All right. May I have a resolution? May, okay. Uh -huh. May I have a, um, a motion to adopt or reject and advertise the ordinance on final reading by title? Motion to adopt. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Fine? Yes. Councilwoman Foster Dublin? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes, and I rode my bike here tonight, and I'm looking forward to riding my bike in even more safety in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Councilwoman Kim? Yes. Councilwoman Welkovitz? Yes. Okay. Clerk, can you report on advertising the acquisition of property ordinance, Raritan Avenue, for consideration of passage on final reading by title? An ordinance pursuant to NJSA 40A 12-3 authorizing the acquisition of 212 Raritan Avenue for a sum not to exceed 420000 acquisition being made as part of the Borough Square Redevelopment Project was duly advertised for consideration of passage on final reading by title. An affidavit of publication is on file. The ordinance was posted and made available for public inspection as required by law. May I have a motion to take up the <coughs> ordinance on final reading by title? So moved. Second. Any public comment? Seeing none. May I have a motion to adopt or reject the resolution uh, to advertise the ordinance on final reading by title? Motion to adopt. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilman Fine? Yes. Councilwoman Foster Dublin? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim? Yes. Councilwoman Welkovitz? Yes. Okay, Clerk, could you please report on introduction of capital <coughs> ordinance amendment for consideration of passage on first reading by title? Capital ordinance amending and restating the capital ordinance number 151896 adopted by the Borough Council on December 1st, 2015, providing for the acquisition of a generator for the Senior Youth Recreation Center, appropriating $132,800 to pay for the cost, has been duly advertised, duly introduced by the Finance Committee for consideration of passage on first reading by title. May I have a motion to adopt or reject and advertise the ordinance on first reading by title? Motion to adopt. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Fine? Yes. Councilwoman Foster Dublin? Yes. 
Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim? Yes. And I would just like to say <laughs> um, this generator, as I mentioned earlier in my report, when we had a emergency situation and during a heat advisory for the senior center, if we have a power outage here in the future, um, the senior youth center will have some electricity. So that's why we're going forward with this generator. And yes. Councilwoman Welkovitz. Yes. Okay. Clerk, could you please report on introduction of land use ordinance amendment for consideration of passage on first reading by title? An ordinance amending Chapter 17 Land Development of the Borough of Highland Park Code has in, been introduced in writing by the Economic Development and Planning Committee for consideration of passage on first reading by title. May I have a motion to adopt or reject and advertise the ordinance on first reading by title? So moved. So motion, motion to adopt. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilman Fine? Yes. Councilwoman Foster Dublin? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim? Yes. Councilwoman Welkovitz? Um, I just want to say this is, uh, again, to give the Safe Walking and Cycling Committee um, more input um, on any of the plans that might come in front of our planning board, in front of our zoning board, our redevelopment agency, to have them have um, a, a good opportunity to weigh in and give their criticisms and their suggestions uh, to um, help make uh, our town safer for bicyclists and pedestrians. So yes. Okay, I would add to that also that this really confirms and reinforces the fact that we are um, an active complete streets community. Um, so, and we have a very involved team on this. I think this is a wonderful next step for us in uh, our complete street strategy. All right, may I have a motion to adopt uh, consent agenda items uh, 817-249 through 817-262. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Fine? Yes. Councilwoman Foster Dublin? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim? Yes. Councilwoman Welkovitz? Yes. Um, I am appointing Kira Herzog uh, as a student member of Sustainable Highland Park. May I have a motion to confirm? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Fine? Yes. Councilwoman Foster Dublin? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilwoman Kim? Yes. Councilwoman Welkovitz? I think we just paused because uh, Councilman George is not here, but we, right. fully, <laughs> we fully welcome Ms. Herzog. Yes. <laughs> OK. Um, Public discussion, last section of public discussion, Mrs. Bickard. Please state your name and address. The chief is here, yay. <laughs> All chief Briscoe. You don't look too wet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Bruce Bickard, 307 Magnolia. Um, about, about the safe walking on when, when the borough sets the lights for the Sabbath and holidays, if you don't push the button, the, the red light or the, the, the walk sign comes up. As soon as Saturday night, is, the Sabbath is over, they cancel it. I see people, and myself included, because I don't see properly, that I miss the crossing because there's no light change. The red light remains. And I would suggest that you go back to the old fashioned way that when the lights change, both should go both ways. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. So, so um, no. I, 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 you're talking about the lights on Raritan? On, yes. So um, Chief, I would actually ask you, is that something we do or the DOT does? Controlled by DOT, whole time sequence is by their engineers, etc. So they would have to. If they, we wanted to change, we'd have to speak to them. But I'm not so sure if that's. I think she's saying it's a little man. Because it's going to affect the people who worship on, the, yeah. on Saturdays. Yeah, I think that's what she's. Yeah. 
a, a number of years ago when we had those lights put in, um, that was a part of the consideration for the, the, the people who observe um, religious practices on Saturday. And they were set up for that. So if we, I think if they go back in to re -collab collaborate the, the lighting system, it might throw off the whole system again. Because initially, we had a problem where the lights would not change. And we went to a system where it would change, and we got the counter, the, the counter that would count down. And that was when we put the new system in place. So if we went back to change again, I mean, it's, it's always worth to have a conversation to see if there's something new in technology that can be done. But I know that's what it was done for. Yeah, I just want to be clear, you know, when Councilwoman Foster Dublin says we, she, she, she means the Department of Transportation. I'm having trouble here. <clears throat> when, when Councilwoman Foster Dublin mentioned we, she, she, she meant the Department of Com uh, yeah. Transportation, because we can't do anything with them. But it is worth, to, to Councilwoman Foster Dublin's point, for the Public Safety Committee perhaps to talk about this, and then we can certainly reach back out to the DOT if the committee feels it's something that we should do. Well, I would feel a lot safer. The conversation is worth having. We'll look into it. We have a meeting scheduled this week, so we, we can put that on there. Okay. Now tell me what Highland Park Gibberhood is. <laughs> One of my favorite topics. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to talk about that in a few weeks. <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, um, some of our employees, including myself, noticed there were a bunch of little kids through high schoolers just hanging out by um, the borough hall when school was not in session. And at some point, they would come into the office and they'd be looking for food. And so um, I, we spoke to the, um, the superintendent of schools and learned that there are nearly 38% of our children on free or reduced lunch. Um, and when there is no school and their parents are not at home, they are not getting healthy lunches. And so HP Gives a Hoot was started as a totally um, um, based on donations that people make to help us provide those lunches. Now, um, what we do um, is um, when school is closed and if the senior center is open, we will provide lunch there, healthy sandwiches, and then we'll sometimes show a movie for the kids to see. We need some adult supervision when that is happening. Um, and the uh, committee is um, reformulating itself. Um, and we have a chairperson who is Michael Buckman, who happens to be a past Board of Ed president. Um, and we have a, a borough liaison, Monica Jackson. Um, we have someone from the schools, um, Susan Odato. And we have one position for a vice chair open for anybody who might be interested. But we also have great need to have a, a, a group of volunteers that would like to work with the committee and help with the children when we are giving them lunch. How can I get in touch with them? You, um, if you want to, you can just reach out to me and I'll forward your email to Mr. Buckman. Um, or you can reach out to them uh, through the Facebook page that they have, HP Gives a Hoot. <laughs> so just, you just. your phone number. Yeah, just, you know how to get in touch with me. <laughs> okay. That's it for the moment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm making a note you're interested. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other public discussion? Okay, seeing none, may I have a, a motion to adjourn to, conf to the conference meeting and executive session? So moved. Second. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. We made it just for you.